We began some weeks ago uh, on the subject we're calling My Sheep Hear My Voice. And um, um, I feel we're, we're nearing the uh, conclusion of this course. You know, you never finish and exhaust one of these subjects. You just get to a place where you can unhook for now. <laughs> and uh, the Lord, uh, He knows what the body needs. You know, just like the human body needs different nutrients and minerals and things at different times. And at this point, maybe you got plenty of this vitamin, but you're lacking in this vitamin. Uh, well, the, the Lord knows what the body of Christ needs. Amen. And um, if we'll listen, then it will get the emphasis of the right thing at the right time. It's all good and true, but uh, there are times we need one thing emphasized more than another. In John 10, in verse 2, the master said, He that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice. Said out loud, the sheep hear his voice. Sheep hear his voice. Are you one of his sheep? Yes. Then you hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep. Who are we talking about? Me. You, me, by name. Does he know your name? And leads them out. He's leading and we're following. Uh, keep reading. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. Who's that? That's what he's leading. We follow. The sheep follow him. Why? How do they know who to follow? Because they know his voice. Come on, everybody said out loud, I know his voice. I am his sheep. I know his voice. He leads me, and I follow him. Now, now don't say anything contrary to that. No matter what you feel or, or don't feel, or if you've gone the wrong way or missed it on something or, or made a mistake, that's all the more reason to begin to talk faith. Even if you realize, man, I just missed it on this. I went the wrong way. Well, that's not his fault. It's not because he wasn't leading. Yeah. Right? You just, you just made a mistake on following. But that's when you want to get your faith in gear and go, I am his sheep. Amen. And I do hear his voice. And he leads me and I follow. Right? You don't want to fall in a pile in the floor and go, I just can't hear from God. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just always do the wrong thing and make, I go the wrong way. I don't know what's wrong with me. That's unbelief. That's walking by sight and my previous experience. And you won't find that anywhere in the scriptures. What you do find is this. And this is what you want to say. This is what you want to believe. Come on, say it again. I am his sheep. I know his voice. He leads me. And I follow him every day, every night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Keep reading. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. It's real simple. Just don't follow strange stuff. <laughs> I know that sounds humorous, but if it's something you think, whoa, where'd that come from? Man, I don't know. It's not familiar to you. Why? Because if it's the Spirit of God coming through me, you've got the same Spirit in you. You're going to recognize Him. Right? You're going to recognize Him. Or any, I just use me as an example. Anybody, in any situation, if it's a family member or a co-worker or whoever, if it's strange and unfamiliar, just leave it alone. Yeah, but everybody's doing it. Well, not everybody, because I'm not. <laughs> and all you got to do is look around the world and history a little bit to see the majority is not, not only is it not always right, it's usually wrong. No? Keep reading. Uh, it said, uh, Jesus spoke this to them, but they understood not what things there were which he spoke to them. They didn't understand it. Verse, verse 7, Jesus said to them again, 
Verily, verily, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Now, this is one thing I'm so thankful about the Lord. He will tell you the same thing again. Just like he didn't tell you the first time. Somebody say, thank God. <laughs> He'll tell you again, just like he didn't tell you. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Skip down to verse 14. I am the good shepherd, Jesus said, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Uh, keep reading. Verse 15. As the Father knows me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. That's us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We should never question His love. He's proven it. He's demonstrated it beyond any question. You don't ever want to look up and go, God, does God really love you? God, that, that's people who don't know Him. When you know Him and know anything, just a little about Him, you know to never question that again. He's laid down His life for us and raised from the dead for us and never lives to make intercession for us. Right? He, he's got nothing to prove to you. He's already done it. It goes on to say, uh, verse 16, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Amen. Glory to God. There's just one body of Christ. There's just one church throughout the earth. Actually, part of them's already in heaven. Hmm? And part of them's on the earth. And uh, one fold. And one shepherd. Skip on down to verse 26. He said, uh, now these are some of these individuals he's talking to, you notice he had to tell them again, same thing, but, but some of these folks uh, didn't get it, even the second time around. He said, you believe not. You don't believe what I'm telling you. Why? Because you're not of my sheep. As I said to you, keep reading, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Keep going. I give them eternal life. They shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Thank you, Lord. Are you his sheep? Yes. Hallelujah. Then if you, uh, if you follow him, you remain in the palm of his hand, in the Father's hand. You stay in the secret place of the Most High, Glory to God. under the shadow of the Almighty. It pays to follow him. When you're following him, you're always at the safe place, in the safe place, at the right place. At the right time. The good shepherd leads the sheep away from danger. Out of the storm. Away from the predators. Hallelujah. To the green pastures. And the still waters. And the safe place in the cleft of the rock. It pays to follow the good shepherd. <laughs> Can you say amen? Amen. Now, uh, in talking about this, uh, go with me to, uh, you're, you're there in John, go to the eighth, eight, back up to the eighth chapter. He said, uh, he told them, talking about hearing him, he said, you, you're not getting this. You're not uh, believing me. And we went into some detail, we're going we're gonna to talk about it some more about having ears to hear. If you were with us earlier in this series, we, we camped a whole night on uh, ears to hear. Uh, numerous places. I mean, just uh, uh, not just three or four, not just 10 or 12. Many places in the scripture talking about him that has ears to hear, let him hear. Have you noticed that? Well, uh, most of the people he was talking to had these on the side of their head. But he must not be talking about that. 
And he talks about hearing and not hearing. Having ears but not hearing. And we talked some about that, but I felt we should, we should review a little bit and go further in it. Because it is so vital to the subject of hearing from God. You will hear people talking about struggling with this issue. This issue. I, well, God never speaks to me, they say. And they, some people mock other folks uh, like me that say, you know, the Lord spoke this to me or, or the Lord said this to me. They think he, he thinks he's hearing from God. They think it's strange. And yet, they're adamant that the Bible is true. And you know what the Bible is full of? People that heard from God. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, when did all that change? Hmm? And so what we see, and people begging God to speak to them and with seemingly no results. That's not the problem. God's not the problem. How I many know God's not the problem? And try, getting God to speak to you is not what we should be focusing on. I know because years ago I, I did that. I, I, I begged and pleaded and begged and pleaded, please God talk to me, please God, whatever, what do you want to say to me? What, what am I supposed to do? Please talk to me, please talk to me. Working on him, trying to get him to talk to me. <laughs> when I finally realized, thank God by the mercy of God, that's not the problem. He is talking. He is speaking. It's just that many don't have ears to hear. Don't, let's, let's not let this skip by us. Is God speaking or not? Do you think He is? Hmm? The same thing is true about seeing spiritually. That's true about hearing spiritually. Uh, you hear people try to say, well, you know, there's no proof of God. I heard somebody the other day, a very famous person was saying, well, you know, if somebody can prove God exists to me, I might believe it. Well, they're in trouble. Hmm? They think there's no evidence of God. What do you think you're standing on? Yeah. Amen. What do you think you're breathing? Amen. What do you think you see when you look up in the night sky? Amen. Romans 1 tells us that even God's eternal power and Godhead are clearly seen by the things that are made. Amen. The heavens declare His handiwork. Hallelujah. The, they're speaking and declaring the glory of God. No evidence of God. That's just evidence that they're blind. <laughs> evidence of God is everywhere. The body you're here in. Hallelujah. Your breath. You're made in His likeness and image. It, it, it's not that there's no evidence of God. It's that people are blind. It's not that God is not speaking. It's that people are not hearing. And it's not because they can't. The problem is that people themselves have closed their own eyes. And people themselves have closed their own ears. And it comes back to a heart issue. Hmm? Heart issue. In John 8, John 8 and 42, John 8, 42. Jesus is speaking to the leaders of the Jews, leaders of the synagogue, the, what we'd call the uh, doctors of theology, the, the religious leaders. And uh, he, he's talking about knowing God and revealing to them that they don't. And this made them mad. And uh, he said, if God were your father, you would love me. I expect that made them matter. <laughs> if God were your father, you'd love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. You know, uh, the Bible says you don't have the father without the son. But if you have the son, you have the father too. Right? I know some people don't think they believe that, but that's what the Bible says. Uh, keep reading. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Now, this is verse 43. So, the previous 40 verses, and more than that, 
He's Jesus himself has been talking with them, reasoning with them, pleading with them, declaring to them, and we get to this. You don't even understand what I'm saying, do you? <laughs> and, and the reason is, you can't hear my words. Now, these are educated people, doctors of theology. Hmm? It's not that they're intellectually dumb, but spiritually, they're blind and deaf. And how many believe it's not because the one who's speaking to them wasn't doing a good job getting it across? <laughs> I mean, he, speak, he said, I only say what I hear my father say. We know he has the spirit without measure. So when Jesus looks you in the eye and he said something to you, <laughs> it's a word from heaven. And the anointing of God is right there. And yet it's possible to sit there and be mad and not have a clue what he's saying. Well, if that was true with him, we shouldn't be shocked if it happens with us. I didn't say it was fun, but we shouldn't be shocked and fall off our chair if we can tell we've said it ten different times. We've said it with all the faith we know how to say it. We've said it with all the love we know how to say it. We've believed God for wisdom, and they look at us like we're speaking a language they don't understand. In that case, they don't have ears to hear it. And why aren't they hearing it? How many think this is something important we should be thinking about and talking about? Because it's a serious thing. Even though the Word of God is life changing, it brings faith. It's how salvation comes. If you can't hear it, if you don't hear it and don't understand it, it does you no good at all. He said, Why do you not understand my speech? I mean, also, almost hear some frustration there, can't you? Not unbelief, but just, you know, the Bible said the Spirit of God can be vexed. Hmm? Well, it's, it's annoying. You're doing the best you can uh, to help somebody, and they're not getting a clue of what you're talking about. Well, if you experience that, be of good cheer. Jesus experienced it too. Huh? <laughs> he said you... He said, you don't understand what I'm saying because you can't hear. You can't hear. You, you can't hear my words. Keep reading. And because I tell you the truth. Well, well verse 44, that's all right. We'll read that. And uh, he didn't make it better with this. <laughs> he said, actually... Your daddy is the devil. <laughs> These are the, the rulers of the synagogue. These are the doctors of the law. The guys with the degrees and the robes. <laughs> he said, you're of the father of the devil. And the lust of your father, you'll do. What, you do what he does. You do what he wants you to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. So when he tells you something, why should it shake us so bad when he's a known liar and when he speaks something, it's a lie. He says, you're not going to make it. We ought to go, glory to God. He's the devil. The liar says, I'm not going to make it, which means I'm going to make it. I'm making it right now. <laughs> Verse 45, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. 
Keep going. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why don't you believe me? Can, can, you, can you hear what's happening here? Jesus has endeavored to help these men. Hmm? And, and they're, they're receiving none of it. They're getting madder by the minute. I mean, at, at the end of this passage, they want to stone him. They want to kill him right now. Well, isn't that what he just said? Your daddy's a murderer. <laughs> and you do the desires of your daddy. Well, what did their daddy want? To kill him on the spot. So what are they doing? Getting ready to kill him on the spot. He's just telling them the truth. He's not trying to slander them. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why don't you believe me? You know, when I first got into ministry, uh, I found out a few scriptures like, um, you know, God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and, and the truth will make you free. And, and, and I, my concept was the biggest problem in the world is ignorance. When people know the truth, that's it. It'll fix them and change their life. All people need is to hear and know the truth. But after a few years, <laughs> I begin to realize that's not all there is to it. <laughs> that there's a lot of folks don't want the truth. They can hear it clearly and by Holy Ghost utterance and anointing and, and still absolutely refuse it and don't want to hear it and don't want to see it, or even though it is the God's truth. So no, it's not the only problem. Ignorance is not the only problem. There's a whole lot of people on the planet, they have heard wonderful things and completely rejected them. They don't want it. Which of you convinces me of sin? If I say the truth, why don't you believe me? He that is of God hears God's words. You therefore hear them not because you're not of God. Now, I don't know if he could have slapped them and made them any madder than telling religious people, you are not of God. You don't know God. And that's, I, he just got through saying, why don't you understand what I'm saying to you? Then he says, because you're not hearing me. Then he says, because you're not of God. You don't know God. That's why you can't hear me. And they're looking for rocks. But I, I say that to remind us we need to walk and live in an awareness of this. Getting the truth, seeing and hearing God is not based on intelligence. Hmm? You could even be pretty dull and pretty slow. But if your heart was right, we have such an amazing teacher, the Holy Spirit. He can frame it in words and illustrations that you can get it perfectly. He's the best teacher and revealer there's ever been. But you can be considered genius by much of the world. And if your heart's not right, you can examine things and hear things and dissect things and you won't hear it, you won't see it, you won't understand it. That's why people say some of the bizarre things they say about God and His Word is because they are so uh, blind and dull to spiritual things. They think they're so smart, but they can't see it because their heart doesn't allow their ear to hear. Their heart doesn't allow their eye to see. So it's not the, the smartest ones that can figure out the Bible. Hmm? I don't know if I'm smart enough to figure that out. It's not based on smarts. Not with preacher, not with believer, no sir, no ma'am. You can study and, and do everything you know to do and Look at all the original text and all your word studies and everything else. Study till you fall off your chair from fatigue. And unless the Spirit of God reaches inside you and turns the light on and shows you something, you won't get anything. Oh, you might make up some stuff, but anybody that's spiritual can tell you made it up. There's no life in it. 
There's no help in it. <laughs> Y'all doing okay? Yes, All right, let's keep going then. Go to the 14th chapter. John 14. We're going to get to some answers. We need to establish this truth, but there are so wonderful answers here. Why don't people hear? Well, we've already touched on it. We're going to look at it further, but it has to do with heart issue. Can it be fixed? Yes. Oh, hallelujah, yes. Can it be fixed? Can a person who's gone year after year not hearing, not seeing, can all at once their ears open up and their eyes open up and begin to see and hear the wonderful good things of God? Yes, 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 hallelujah, yes. It can happen quickly. In John 14 and 16, 14, 16, he said, I'll pray the Father, he'll give you another comforter. At that point, he was there. He was the first comforter with them in the flesh. And the words mean another one like me. That he may abide with you forever. Keep reading now. Even the spirit of truth whom the world, what? cannot receive because it what? Doesn't see him and, and doesn't know him. A lot of Christians have frustrated themselves trying to explain spiritual things to people who can't see them and hear them. They've just frustrated themselves. And all you do is, is, is when you leave, they, they think you're a fool and talk about you and they didn't get anything out of it. Hmm? Didn't the Bible talk about this? Uh, God has chosen through what men call the foolishness of preaching that people get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. But see, the world sees it as nonsense. They think you and I are just undeveloped. <laughs> that when humanity, you know, that's developed from apes and whatever, when, when, we, when we grow and our brains develop enough, we will lose this primitive uh, superstitious need for religion. <laughs> and that really most of the woes of the world and humanity are religious people. We are the scourge of the earth. And see, they point to religious groups like ISIS and others and, and, and say, look, that's what's causing the problem in the earth is these religious fanatics. And they include us. And, well, religious fanatics is religious fanatic. And what we need is to get educated and to grow a brain <laughs> and develop and become intelligent. <laughs> but from according to the scriptures, it's the fool that says there is no God. See, they're, they're mocking us as fools, but that's just the way judging goes. You judge somebody else for something. Truth is, you're the one. You're the one. They're the ones that are blind and dumb and don't see and hear what's obvious is that there is a creator. Oh, hallelujah. And one of these days they're going to breathe their last and slip out of here. And if they didn't see it before, it's going to be an immediate rude awakening that they are a spirit, not just a body with a brain. Huh? And they're going to become aware there's a father of spirits and there's a heaven and there's a hell. Hmm? Exactly. And there's eternity. Amen. But it could be late. Aren't you thankful by the mercy and grace of God? Yes. You have at least some idea. <laughs> Not claiming you know all that much, but you know God is God. Yes. That's way ahead of much of the world. Is that right? You know Jesus is Lord. That's ahead of billions. You know you're born again. You know your name's in the Lamb's book of life. Right? Right? 
You know what's going to happen to you when you die? You're in a wonderful place, brother, sister, compared to billions on the planet. You are the called out ones. Hallelujah. We've been talking about on Sunday, you're a special people, a purchased possession, a rare treasure. You are. Woo. Mm. Hallelujah. That was worth you combing your hair and coming out tonight, right? Right there. <laughs> Ooh, where are we? What, what about the Holy Spirit? You try to talk to somebody that's not born again and don't want to be and don't want to hear about the Holy Spirit, about speaking in tongues, huh? And the gifts of the Spirit. You're wasting your time. They can't even hear you. They couldn't, they couldn't understand what you're saying no matter what kind of words you put it into. Hmm? I know we were down in Miami some years ago and at a great meeting. and there was, I think it was 70 of us ministers went to a, 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 a restaurant, well-known big restaurant down there together to have lunch. And we were in one of Brother Kenneth Hagin's Holy Ghost meetings. He come, Holy Ghost me. And so we all come in. We'd had a great service that morning. We were just all filled and, and laughing and cutting up with each other and, and carrying on. And, and it was a nice, uh, some nice restaurant and, and, you know, white tablecloths and all that kind of stuff. And, and so we come through and, and this one lady uh, pulls on the, the coat of, uh, one of one of our most fiery evangelists in the bunch. She don't know which one she grabbed when she grabbed him. And she said, uh, what is all this? What is all? He said, uh, we've been having a Holy Ghost meeting. Man, he didn't tone it down. He just, and, uh, and she said, uh, uh, do you wear a costume to that? <laughs> See, no point of reference, right? We need to remember who we're talking to. I mean, you, you come in here and, and we shout together and, and God's been showing us things together for years and, and, and bringing us through things and we, we're coming up and, and, and you talk that way with your brothers and sisters and co-workers and folks on your team. But, but when you're talking to somebody that's not even born again and don't want to be and don't care, you need to realize they're not going to be able to hear and understand most of what you talk about Amen. with each other need to be led by the Spirit. Hmm? It can just cause problems. Hmm? And you don't need to talk to them about their sin. <laughs> don't you know living like that is wrong? That's not the problem. Hmm? And here you've you got to ask yourself, do they care whether it's wrong or not? <laughs> See, that's the thing. You, you, could, you can have 12 scriptures ready to show them. But when you get through, they didn't care if it was wrong before you started. <laughs> and if you don't believe in God, what well, do you care about that book? We, we need to let the Lord lead us, don't we? Because there are times we would respond. You know, the, the Lord said, he, he said, I'll make you fishers of men. Well, got any fishers in the house? Let me see anybody that's a fisherman. Fisherman? I'm talking about a natural fisherman. <laughs> natural fisherman? Well, you use different techniques for different fish. Trout fishing, bass fishing, sword fishing, right? A different technique, a different bait, right? And what you don't do is just go out to the lake with your pole and go, bite it. <laughs> bite it. <laughs> bite it. Jump on there. <laughs> that doesn't work. The fish just go away. <laughs> 
And yet that's how some folks are trying to get people to the Lord. You're going to hell. You need to receive the Lord. Receive him. Believe, believe, receive him, receive him. <laughs> Sometimes the Lord will lead you to just back completely off. And what you're doing is you're you just let it sit there. Let's <laughs> move it just a little bit. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> because if they don't want to bite it, you got nothing to work with. <laughs> I know years ago I was coming back from a meeting and I was on a commercial airliner, and this guy sat down beside me, and I could you could tell he was just as rough as could be, ungodly, and and uh, we we're sitting there for a while, and and he asked me what I did. And, I told him. I could tell he was not impressed. <laughs> and so uh, uh, it was several hours long, and, and I, was, I wanted to prepare for some things, so I kind of leaned over to the side and got out my notes and looking at some. And so uh, uh, he waited as long as he could. Finally, he said, so, so you believe that book? I said, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been 20 minutes. He said, you really do? I said, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and he's waiting on me because he knows I'm a preacher. He's waiting, waiting on me to pounce on him. Huh? And just barrage him with all this stuff. And so finally, he just couldn't take it anymore. And he said, well, what about all these things? I mean, these people, some people claim this is what you're supposed to do, and some people claim this is what you're supposed to do, and, and everybody's got their own idea of the Bible and what that means, and, and uh, you know, who's right? I said, God's right. Right. <laughs> 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 Before the trip was over, he said, well, what do you think is the most important thing? And I knew he's biting. Yeah. He's biting. I said, I'll tell you what's the most important thing. I said, oh, that, I said, I don't know, understand all about this book. There's so many good things in here. and Some people have some things I don't have. And I said, I'll tell you the biggest thing to me, what changed my life is I got to know him personally. Hallelujah. I, I called out to him in faith, and he is as real to me as another human being and more, and I know him. Hallelujah. And I could, but when, I, when I began to talk about that, he went. <laughs> he began to ask questions. <laughs> See, there's no need. He was cussing and drinking and doing, you know, saying ugly things. There's no need in us talking about any of that. Amen. He's not going to change. He don't care. Even if I could prove it to him with 30 scriptures, how wrong it was. He doesn't care if it's wrong. And that's not the problem. The problem is not these lifestyle issues. It's him not knowing God. If you come to know him, then you begin to care what he thinks and what he wants. Now you're open to some changes in your life. Before then, you're not. Years ago, Phyllis worked in a doctor's office and she dealt with the insurance claims and she, uh, uh, she was dealing with this one guy, called him, I guess, where he was in another state, right? And, and uh, I, you had to wait on the phone or something while they did some things. And anyway, how'd the conversation start up? He started telling you about this crazy girl he was dating who was off a rocker. Went to one of them crazy churches where they talk in tongues and all that stuff. <laughs> she don't know this guy. He just starts telling all this stuff over the phone. And uh, I guess it got, kind of got quiet. And, and finally, did he ask you about you and what you did? And so what you said, yeah? Well, first he told me he, he didn't believe in that stuff, but he thought, you know. He didn't believe in that stuff. Can you tell it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just grab that mic right there. Just tell it real brief. We just said, uh, he, uh, 
we were talking about insurance stuff, and he said, yeah, he'd been dating this girl, and then she goes to church a lot, and he didn't believe in that church stuff, you know, and, and uh, I said, uh, uh-huh, and uh, he said, uh, matter of fact, he said, I, I don't believe in that God stuff, and I said, uh-huh, and he said, uh, uh, she believes in that, talking that funny language stuff, and I said, uh-huh, and he said, uh, uh, she goes to that church where they do all that stuff, and they lift their hands and all that stuff, and I said, uh-huh. And he said, uh, what do you think about all that stuff? And I said, uh-huh, yeah, whatever you think. And he said, uh, no, well, I just think I'm the Antichrist. And uh, he said, what do you think about that? And I said, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and he said, uh, so what do you think? Would, do you think you should pray for me since I'm the Antichrist? And I said, what's the point in praying for you if you're the Antichrist? <laughs> <laughs> well, I pray for the Antichrist. You know, well, you know, it's, somebody needs to, you know, you, so you need to pray for me or you need to talk to me about this church stuff. You know, I said, he said, do you believe all that stuff? And I said, yeah. And he said, do you go to one of those churches? And I said, yeah. And he said, uh, you think that's right? And I said, yeah. He said, well, don't you think you need to talk to me about that stuff? And I said, nope. <laughs> <laughs> he said, uh, don't you think you need to try to get me to see that, what she sees? And I said, no. Nope. I said, there's no point in praying for you if you're the Antichrist. I said, if you want to go to hell, go to hell. I'm going to go to heaven. I said, I think heaven's better than hell. You know, so. And before the call was over, he's practically pleading with her to pray for him. <laughs> And we're not talking about any kind of reverse psychology technique. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about is until somebody wants to hear it, they can't hear it. They can't hear it. They can't see it. So uh, uh, we, we just need to be led by the Spirit, don't we? Because every situation is different. Every person is different. And different fish require different bait. And different techniques. Right? Um, go with me, please, to Acts, the seventh chapter. <laughs> I, did, I didn't finish reading this. Uh, Act, John 14, then we'll go to Acts uh, 7. John 14, and where were we? 17? Let's finish reading this, and then we'll go there. The world can't uh, receive the Holy Spirit. The world can't see Him. It doesn't know Him. Can't. You have to be born again. Hallelujah. But you know Him. Aren't you thankful, saints? You know Him because He dwells with you and shall be in you. That was before the day of Pentecost and the cross. Now He is in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Verse 19, yet a little while and the world, what? Sees me no more, but you see me. Hallelujah. We see what the world doesn't see. We hear what they don't hear. Because I live, you'll also live. Oh, praise God. Somebody say, praise God. Praise God. Aren't you glad you can see and you can hear and you can understand and believe and receive the fullness of God? Oh, hallelujah. And it's not because you're smarter than other people on the planet that don't see. It's because there was a time when you opened your heart to him. And you humbled yourself before him and you were willing to believe it and hear it. And when your heart got like that, your ears opened up and your eyes opened up and you could hear. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Without uh, going there, Isaiah 45, 15 says this. Isaiah 45, 15 says, you are a, verily, you are a God that hides yourself. Somebody said, I thought God was a God who revealed himself. He's both. But to some, 
He hides himself. I'm well convinced if God did any more manifesting himself in the earth than what he's doing now, it would take away faith. He, he's doing all he can do without the whole world just seeing without having to believe. And he's ordained that it be by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to continue to be for now where if you don't want to believe, you can choose not to and close your eyes and not see it. There's coming a day when the trump's going to sound. Oh, hallelujah. There's coming a day when the heavens are going to roll up like a scroll. And there won't be anybody anywhere in heaven, earth, or hell that can say there is no God. But for now, it's by faith. You have to choose to believe. In uh, Luke 10 and 21, it said, Jesus rejoiced in spirit. He said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven. You've hid these things from the wise and prudent, and you've revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, it seemed good in your sight. People that think they're so smart, it's hid from them. They, they can study this book, and they won't see anything. They hear preaching. It just sounds foolish to them. But God's chosen the foolish things of the world. Me and you. <laughs> and the weak things. Is that right or not? Weak? Are you chosen of him? Well, that's what he said. But he chose us to reveal himself to us. Oh, glory to God. And the more you believe in him, and the more your heart's open, the more he will reveal himself to you. God, I can't hear from God. That's not a testament against him. It's against you. Because he's talking. I can't see God anywhere. That's not, that's not a problem with God. It's blind eyes. Where were you going before I got into that? Acts 7. Acts 7.51, Stephen is preaching by the anointing. Reminds you of what Jesus was doing over there in John 8. And he's not cutting him any slack. Is he? And he is moments away from going to glory. <laughs> is that right? Why? Because they are of their father, the devil, a murderer. Is that right? And he won't, the devil won't Stephen murdered. And obviously they're his kids because they did his bidding. They did it. But one of the things he said to them before he left, <laughs> he said, you stiff necked. What's a stiff neck? Show me what's a stiff neck. What, what, what is that? It's a picture of what? Obstinacy, rebellion, being unteachable, without instruct, won't receive instructions. Yes, stubborn. Hmm? And if you do that, notice the, the next thing. Stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. When you, when God's talking to you and you do this, your ears do this, and your eyes do this. When you stiffen your neck and you harden your heart, your ears close up. And even though you hear the sound of the voice, you can't make it out anymore because you're mad and you're not going to do it. And even though you see something out there, you can't make out what it is anymore. When he said, him that has ears to hear, let him hear. What's the difference between this person that can hear and this person that can't? 
Everything else is the same about them, except this one's getting it and shouting, and this one's not. What's the difference? Only the heart. The unwillingness. The obstinacy. Read it again. Stiff-necked, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do you. We, we, we read this the last time we talked about this, but I want to read it again. Just, just hold your place there or wherever you are. Matthew 13, Jesus said this. Verse 9, who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said, because it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not given. He was talking to them in code. Code that only a heart, a willing heart, and a heart of faith can hear. Hallelujah. And uh, he said, to whoever has, to him will be given. He'll have more abundance. Whoever has not, from him will be taken away, even what he has. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. Is there a connection between a heart that's hardened and calloused over, and ears that can't hear? And their eyes they have closed. Who closed their eyes? They did. Why? Because they don't want to see it. They don't want to hear it. They have closed. Lest at any time they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, heart, heart. He keeps talking about the heart, doesn't he? And should be converted and I should heal them. Friends, there are no serious problems that can't be fixed with God. The only serious problems that exist from his perspective are heart problems. Because if we would adjust our heart and believe and be willing, the answer can come just like that. Can he do anything, friends? Can he fix anything? Heal anything? Provide for anything? Fix anything? But no matter how powerful he is and how able he is and how willing he is. Didn't Jesus say, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anybody will open the door, what's going to happen? He's going to come in and he's going to talk to us. Hallelujah. I'm reading it now, Revelation 3.20. I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door. I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Why won't the Lord talk to me? You got to open the door. (laughs) Invite him in. We, We read this last time talking about hearing the voice of God. Samuel, as a boy, God was calling him. And he ran to Eli, thought Eli was calling him. And finally, Eli, in the wisdom that God gave him, said, next time he calls, just say, speak. Your servant's listening. Speak, I'm I'm hearing. Did he open the door? And so then God just talked to him, showed him all kinds of things. Oh, praise God. Somebody say, thank you, Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scriptures talk about the calloused heart being that which is covered. He even talks about in Corinthians the veil that covers people's eyes so that they can't see and how the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that don't believe. But when you, the Bible said when you turn to the Lord 
That's a heart thing, isn't it? When you turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. 1 Corinthians 3. When you turn to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So it's not a matter of pushing hard and explaining it more and, and being louder about it. That gets you nowhere. It's not a matter of yelling at God and begging Him to talk to you and show you. That's, that's not how it works. That's why so many people are frustrated. It's real simple. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. And you can without waiting another minute. You can bow your knee before the great Creator God and you can open your heart and you can humble yourself. Oh, somebody say amen, amen. You can humble yourself and go, God, great Father, I am willing. Now, He knows if you don't mean it or not. I am willing to hear whatever you would say to me. You know a lot of times what he wants to say to you? Same thing he told you 30 years ago <laughs> that you didn't listen to. <laughs> he never changes. He never changes. <laughs> but Lord, I, your servant's listening. He knows if that's just empty words or if there's an open heart connected to it. And if it is, what happens if somebody hardens their heart and stiffens their neck? Their ears close. And their eyes. We see this with each other. Yeah. You ever had an argument with somebody? Yeah. Boy, everybody looks so holy looking across the crowd. <laughs> argument? <laughs> Husbands and wives. Huh? Have you ever had an intense discussion? Yeah. Huh? Yes. And got to a place where you know, this is going to ring a bell for you. You got to a place where they're saying things and you're going, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. <laughs> huh? And you say it and you say, it. no, they didn't. You tell they didn't hear it. I told you. No. Well, you said that. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. When people get obstinate, and they harden their heart. They can get to where they cannot hear each other. And this is serious. And what happens when you can't hear each other and you can't understand each other, you're not hearing each other. You're only hearing what the enemy is telling you about what they're saying. And that's how he drives wedges to divide and overcome. Divide and destroy. But if you can stop in the middle of that and humble your heart and get a hold of your temper hmm, and pull yourself back, what happens when your heart humbles and opens up? You quit being hard-headed and stubborn and obstinate where well, your ears open up and you can hear what they're saying and you'll go, oh, well, okay. No, that wasn't what I meant. Well, no, I mean either. Amen. Things can be fixed just like that. Is that right? Amen. Can you see how the enemy is always trying? He, he wants to get us blind and deaf just punching each other. Hmm? And we're fools if we let him play us like that. Especially those of us who should be learning some things in Faith Life Church. Because God's talking to us about these things. Once he tells them, shows them to us, he expects us to remember them, right? And the next time something comes up and, and you can tell communication is getting harder and harder and harder, you should know what's happening. Hearts are getting hard and ears are getting closed. Doesn't have to be that way. I said it doesn't have to be that way. And you can, you, even if the other party is not wanting to cooperate that much, you could make a difference just by you beginning to humble yourself and soften your heart and soften your words and begin to apologize and go, well, I, I, look, I'm, uh, tell me again. I'm, I'm not trying to, 
us to have a problem here. You know, just, just ha- soften your heart instead of harden your heart. I know years ago, we were in a meeting and uh, uh, Brother Hagin called me on the platform to do some things. And, and I did, I, f- I felt like it was the Lord at his direction. Well, some pastors had a problem with it. Some of them had a big problem with it. They wrote me a letter and they straightened me out. And um, I didn't like it. Of course, I was a lot younger than I am now. (laughs) And I thought, hey, I didn't say all this, but uh, it's not your meeting. It's Brother Hagin's meeting. He called me up. Uh, If he's happy with it, what's your problem? You know? But you know, you, you get a little bit of attitude. Your heart begins to firm up some. What's happening to your ears? Well, this went on for a few weeks, and I was praying about some things, other things. And you know, sometimes you're wanting to talk to the Lord about one thing, He's wanting to talk to you about something else. Amen. He's wanting to talk to me about that. He brought it up to me. And this is what He said to me. I don't mean I heard a voice, but inside me, He said, uh, I want you to write them a letter and apologize. I thought, huh? <laughs> apologize? I thought, apologize. I said it about five times. <laughs> apologize? For what? Lord, didn't you direct me to do that? Did I miss you on that? Lord. He said to, to my heart, he said, you suppose there's nothing about that whole thing you could apologize for. You could not have said it with greater grace or more wisdom or more love. There's nothing you could have done better. I said, yes, sir. I'm sure there's something I could have done better about it. He said, well, you can apologize for that. And then he said this. He said, and I'm not hearing an audible voice, but these things are coming up out of my spirit and lightening my mind. I just saw it just like this. If I say something to Brother Hagin about it, and some other people hear about it, and they take sides, and these folk talk to somebody else, and they take sides, this thing could become a deal. And the next time we're supposed to have a meeting together, we got these feelings. Is that right? And this coldness, and this... How many understand that's not God? That's not God. And if I could could make one apology and make all this go away, and I saw that, and then the Lord said to me, would you do it for me? It's over. Would I do it for him? After everything he's done for me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I did. I believed the Lord to show me what to say. I said it as kind as I could. They received it. They were happy. I asked us to come do them a meeting. Hallelujah. And we had a great meeting, and with good things, some miracles happened. Somebody say, Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Isn't that better than it just getting, you, you getting harder and harder, and them getting harder and harder, and then you're not hearing, and they're not hearing, and you're not seeing, and they're not seeing, and it gets worse and worse until you just have nothing to do with each other. That's the enemy. I said, That's the enemy. And we're not ignorant of his devices. Go please to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I want to read this out of the Good News translation. Hebrews had said, if you'll hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Said it like three times in that same chapter. If you will, today, if you will hear his voice. Harden not your hearts. Say it out loud. Harden not your hearts. hearts. Don't harden your heart. Is that something I have control over, that you have control over? Don't harden your heart. This scripture says in 2 Corinthians 6, 11, Dear friends, he said, this is good news translation, we've spoken frankly to you. We have opened our hearts wide. It's... 
It's not we who have closed our hearts to you. It's you who have closed your hearts to us. I speak now as though you are my children. Show the same feelings we have for you. Open your hearts wide. He said, open up. Don't, don't be closed. Don't be shut off. Open wide your hearts. Oh, how many believe this is the cry of the Spirit of God to the whole earth? Don't close your heart to the Lord. Don't stiffen your neck. Open your heart. Bow your knee. Open your heart. And everything you need is right here. Can you say amen? amen? Oh, hallelujah. Everybody stand if you would. Oh, hallelujah.